guys going? Welcome back to Terminal Great Day. Here we are next to the amazing California coastline next to LA. You can actually see like um, the ports down there where all the, uh, the big cargo ships are being pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. But today in this video, we're gonna review one of the most popular style vehicles over here next to West LA. Today, we are driving the all new Aston Martin DBX, and I'm just so excited about it. So quick rundown on the outside of the vehicle, specs, specs. 542 horsepower from a 4 liter AMG V8 that is turbocharged, similar to how Aston Martin has done it in the past, right? Using a lot of parts and bits from AMG. However, there's nothing wrong doing that because Mercedes in their AMG department, they know how to get these cars built well. Right away though, looking at the design of the Aston Martin DBX versus the competitor from Lamborghini, obviously the styling department couldn't be any more different. This is much more classy. Yes, it's not as aggressive as like a DB11 or super leger. It's not supposed to be. This is supposed to be your ultimate luxury cruiser. Now the owner of this car, Scott, is a super cool guy. Make sure to follow him on Instagram. I'll show his username right here on the screen. However, he's got a pretty cool collection of all sorts sorts of luxury SUVs and he was telling me how much he likes it even compared to the Bentley Bentayga. This is the first ever Aston Martin that is a SUV. The DB5, all the other versions of the Aston Martin have been stereotypically the sports car first. This is tackling that SUV crossover audience that is getting so popular in this day and age. Towards the front of the vehicle they have managed to find a way to make it not only classy but extremely sporty. This color with the deep metallic flakes all in the gray slash black, I'm a big, big fan of it. I'll list on the screen the name of the color exactly. However, one interesting characteristic of this new Aston Martin is that it's got the biggest Aston Martin badges ever fitted on a production vehicle. Going over this all new front fascia for this SUV variant, I am honestly a major fan. Obviously, you got the stereotypical style front grille that you find with the DB9 and the other models in the lineup. However, coming up closely, you can see just how big the front radiators are. Again, this is an AMG engine, so it's shared in a lot of different production vehicles. Coming down here to these lower running lights, they have found a way to integrate a brake duct similar to what Dodge does with the Dodge Demon <laughs> for their headlights. And this brake duct channels all the way through, straight through this front fascia to these massive, massive front rotors and calipers. You do have 285 40 by 22s up front, 22 inch wheels. However, out back you've got 325s. Wider tires is what you find on a 765 LT. So the contact patch is definitely there. If you wanted to use this vehicle and get it a bit uh, dirty, you can off-road it and the suspension will lift up hydraulically similar to the other competitors in the lineup. Another design characteristic I really like is look at this typical Aston Martin rear ducktail going straight up. I'm a major, major fan of how clean and fluid this vehicle looks, especially with these high-tech LED taillights and headlights. Interestingly, you do have a spoiler that is like baked in to the back hatch, and I'm not quite sure regarding the functionality of it, what it'll do. I'm leaning towards just adding stability to the rear end of the vehicle. You never know, you may need that rear spoiler out back if you're going after that 183 mile per hour top speed. You've got these hexagonal cutouts in the actual molding, which will help provide cooling for those rear exhausts. Check out these floating vents right here. This adds such an aggressive stance to the car. And it'll help release a lot of the turbulent air, the airflow behind the front wheels. What is going on here today? I've never seen, I've never seen so many Porsche SUVs in my life. Are we trespassing into their domain? These door handles are just like those of the Lamborghini Huracan. Push in, pull out. Here we go, getting inside the Aston Martin for my first drive. Now, there's so many Porsches driving by. Why are there so many? They all have a uh, Georgia license plates. I think they're press cars. I think they're doing like a press car event out here because I've seen like 15 of them, uh, which is very funny. But back to the door, 
I love how when the doors open up, it just goes straight up with the swan hinge doors. It gives the car a bit of an extra punch, especially when you park it, because when people see how your doors are not going straight out, usually they're going up on an angle. It's just unique, it's cool, and it adds to a lot of the fun flair inside the car. These seats are extremely comfortable, actually. The stitching. It's very, very nice. All the extra white and custom stitching is an option, so it's gonna add up a bit over time. This car starts at right around $200,000. This one is spec to close to 280, and sitting inside, it definitely feels like a $200,000 car in terms of the build quality, because everything you touch, everything you feel is this nice and high quality leather, and then the formations of the way everything is put together. There's so many amazing flowing lines everywhere in different patterns that it gives the car that luxury appeal. And this exact one is specced with extra carbon fiber, which you can find everywhere inside the cockpit. And if you're a carbon fiber fan, you just, you gotta do it, you gotta get it. Anyways, you know what? Let's go ahead and start this vehicle up. I love how the Aston Martin uh, start gauges and uh, drive selectors are way up here on the dashboard. <laughs> this car, you can tell, it shares a lot of components from Mercedes-Benz models, that being the screens are straight from Mercedes-Benz, the turn indicators are from Mercedes-Benz, but Aston Martin does throw in a ton of their own unique uh, key traits inside the vehicle, like the way the dashboard is laid out. You've got these like cutouts or rivets around the outside, and it's not metal, it's like this soft plastic, but texturized plastic material that's wrapping around the front gauge cluster. What I like about it is that the front gauges are very, very clear. Definitely more clear than some of the older models. <laughs> It almost looks 4K to me. The steering wheel is light, and every button that you can possibly uh, use is up here, except you can't control this front screen with your hands next to the steering wheel. Uh, you can put your hands all the way down and use more um, OEM Mercedes-Benz features, like this turn knob that you use to cycle through all the different settings on the, on the display. It does have uh, three 60-degree cameras. You can't touch the screen. You just gotta keep cycling through everything with this middle knob. I wish it was touch screen like Chevrolet cars, Dodges, a lot of vehicles nowadays have touchscreen LCDs and it would be nice to have it in a uh, quarter million dollar SUV. Let's go ahead and pop it into Sport Plus, which is the way you got to drive the car. We're going to leave the vehicle on the lowest of ride height for extra stiffness and better performance in the corners. I think I'm going to turn on manual shifting which to do that, I don't even see the button to do that. I see auto start and stop, the mode selectors, I see the ride height, I don't see manual shifting anywhere. So hopefully when I put it manual, it won't kick us out. You have a 12 o'clock racing mark on the top of the steering wheel. That's so cool. Here we go. Let's go into drive. And I felt the parking brake pull back towards me. It's funny because my name is Austin, if you guys don't know that. And I'm finally driving my first Aston. Everything that you see in this car is so characteristically British and also um, Aston Martin because the doorknobs open it up. It's like this very unique uh, grab piece. Oh yeah. It definitely feels good so far. Feeling out the Aston Martin DBX downshifting. These paddles are actually uh, stationary on the column itself, not with the steering wheel. So when you're turning, they're not actually going with the steering wheel. Uh, I prefer the paddles going with the steering wheel, but this is fine. This is very uh, Ferrari-ish, <laughs> I guess you can say. But getting to these corners, feeling out the brake, downshifting, the car is very smooth. However, it's stiff enough and it it manages the body roll very well. Let's go and do a pull right here to feel it out. You ready? First gear. Wow, look at this view next to us. This is where you gotta drive one of these vehicles. I love shifting the gears. Yes, the transmission is not the fastest transmission in the world. It's not supposed to be. This is not a track car. This has got a nine speed automatic, which in its own right handles the car very well. Um, it's only a slight delay on each gear change, but having 540 horsepower, it uh, definitely uh, doesn't feel like it's not enough. Though there's an all new 
a DBX that's coming out, the 707, which is uh, this car, but with 700 horsepower essentially. And uh, the owner of this vehicle, uh, Scott, was telling me how he definitely want, wanted to try to get one. I love the way the brakes respond. Initially, there's not much bite, but the feedback with the pedal, it's satisfying. And then when you push deeper and deeper in, it's very McLaren-ish with how the first couple inches aren't the most aggressive, but later on, oh wow, it's making the car slow down. But let's go ahead and downshift and uh, try a quick pull just to feel it out. Here we are, we are in, you hear the pops and crackles actually? <laughs> it sounds actually uh, really good. And uh, when you let off towards a higher RPM, like 5,000 RPM, nowhere near the red line, uh, it's doing these back uh, crackles and pops like the Lamborghini Urus does. Chassis-wise, you know, it's it's pretty similar to the Urus. The Lamborghini is much more aggressive. That's why you buy it. This, you buy an Aston Martin if you have class. Look at these roads, it's so smooth. And in sport mode, the vehicle isn't getting too bumpy or rough. It's soaking up the bumps very well. I love these roads out here. I, I wish I lived closer to the coastline. Downshifting. Hear the pops right there? With the 545 horsepower, you do have 515 pound-feet of torque. It gets the vehicle up and going pretty well. However, I can definitely see how there is more room if you wanted to go all out with the DB707. Yes, this is not the fastest luxury SUV on the market. However, you're not buying into that. You're buying into the Aston Martin Prestige and the, the luxury. It's a luxury brand, isn't it? And uh, for what it's offering, you, if you buy this, you would definitely have a car that, that would turn heads. And for that reason alone, I believe it is the best-selling Aston Martin there is. The target audience for this car. This vehicle is so wide. Anyways, hope you enjoyed my first drive and review. Make sure to subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. I'll see all of you in the next episode.